excited the microphone for the green light to the speed trap. Greg Reno and Jody calls them as they seize them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinion, and outright nonsense regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas with mechanical trickery never before broadcast over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrills with the explosive tension as Ray and Joe cuss each other down track. Barrel roll across the finish line, laughing in certain disaster as they shake hands. The devil. <laughs> All that and so much more at high noon this Sunday on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and the live feed, Ray Carino and Joe D. Bring the whole family, kids under 12 get in free every Sunday at noon on WHBC. Take the Hempstead Turnpike to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway side. Go right on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Yeah, we may not have been out on the road for 40 days. We feel 40 like 40 hours, maybe, maybe, not 40 days. In a triple haze. Absolutely. You have tuned in to Long Island's only automotive radio talk show, Motormouth Radio, with your hosts, Ray Guarino, ho- co-host Wingman, and on the cowbell... The other guy. Joe D. <laughs> there, uh, <laughs> there we go. They bit me. And we are having a great show today. We have in the studios with us today, Debbie and Rusty. Rusty Becker from the Long Island Karting Association. Fellas. Fellas. Fel- fella and, Ladies and, and gentlemen. Lady. Very uh, happy to have you here. It's, it's uh, great to have you guys in the studio with us today. And uh, there we go. Your mics are on. Thank you. You can get in touch with us if you want to play along at uh, 516-572-7440. Or you can check us out on the web, MotormouthRadio.com. Follow us on Twitter, which is Motormouth Radio. And Rusty and Joe's favorite on Instagram. Real underscore. Motormouth Radio. Yep. Right. And we'll, we, you can... Um, Keep up with us, what we do during the week. Go to the website, sign up for our weekly blog uh, notifications, uh, watch our YouTube channel that we're starting up now. We have all sorts of cool stuff happening. So, uh, But today, we're here to talk about go-karts. So, Rusty, let's, yes. let's go, man. I mean, you, um, you've been doing this for quite a long time, but now, like, like a lot of us, you've had the hobby, went away from it for various reasons, and now you're getting back into it. Yes, so, uh, they're actually racing vintage carts again, all over the place, nice. and uh, that that brought me back. I actually was driving by the Nassau Coliseum one day, saw go karts in there. I figured, well, I haven't been to the track in twenty years, but I pulled <laughs> in, and they were running vintage carts. Wow! And the, the first guy I spoke to, I said, "Wow, this is great! I could do this." I said, "If I could find a cart like my my original cart, my my first Blitz cart." I'd probably do this. The guy said, I got one in my garage, so let's it was ste- history. Let's step back for a second. When was that first cart? How far back do you go with this sport? I started racing at West Hampton in 1970, and I actually ran in the parking lot, not the parking lot, the runways on Mitchell Field in 68 and 69. They had a track there. It wasn't official racing, but yeah. it, but it was, you know, it was like practice. Which is where we are right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah right? comes yeah. around. It was a quarter mile from here at the most. What is old yeah. is new again. Absolutely. Well, that's very cool. But now, of course, in in this day and age, with all of us being of... A advanced, certain age. Advanced years, more advanced years than we were when we were 18 and 20. I'm more about three or four degrees retarded myself. <laughs> there you go. You could say this. I'm, mm. You know, a lot of things that we do, we have to be a lot more careful because of physical limitations and things. Hey, it's, let's face it, it, it really sucks to get hurt. Putting you know, on one's socks becomes an adventure. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tying on the shoes. Out, though. He's been working out for the past year and a half, right? You have to. That's it's, smart. It's a lot. Up, it's unbelievably ups. more physical than you could ever ever imagine to race a go-kart. The little squeezy thing? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's using, That's what you call him? Uh, well, 
What are they called? Grippers. No, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but he has like uh, special grippers where you can adjust the dial and it oh, gets yeah, harder yeah. and harder and harder. He's broken the spring I don't know how many times and he's had to replace. Cool. Excellent. No yeah, now he's on the Max you. Max one. I like that. I mean, cool. racing carts was, was not easy when we were young. I mean, your, your neck would get really sore and your shoulders and... There's no suspension whatsoever. Your back takes a beating. So yeah. and then there's you a gotta, G-force, you know, on your right. neck. If you, you know. wanna, you know, if you wanna still be on the gas at the end of the race, you got to be in some kind of shape. Yeah, well, let's face it. Yeah, there's a lot of forces working on you there, and <laughs> yeah. it's it's a lot easier when you're younger. Stuff just kind of falls back into place. Absolutely. <laughs> my, you got my respect. <laughs> you you got to think about what used to come naturally. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Now, l- licarding.com, carding with a K, is mm-hmm. one of the sites where people can go to find out about this stuff. Is that correct? Um Possibly. I think I, it is, yeah. I, I don't know of that one. Well, there's Vintage Carding Associating. Uh, associate. VKA. V, v Carding. V <laughs> K A R T A N G dot com, right? There's another one. Uh, I saw that, but I noticed on one of the, one of the I think it was on licarding.com, there was a video, and it showed, I think it was at, at uh, uh, across the street at uh, the Coliseum, the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. and it looked like the guys had like race pack displays on the, on the on cart. The, on the steering wheel. So I would imagine that gives you all sorts of feedback. Does that give you G-force feedback? No, that's a tack. It's, okay. Generally speaking, it's a tack temp. And it okay. gives you a digital readout that you can either see both simultaneously or you can switch back and forth depending on what brand you have. Right, right. But that's just mainly for like dialing in your gear and your clutch. Okay. Now, some of the, I mean, there's a, there's a wide variety of carts. There's single engine, dual engine... You know, I mean, there's... Two-cycle, four-cycle. Yeah. There's enduro karting. There's all sorts of different subcategories. Uh-huh. He loves to race his dual kart, though. He yeah. won the uh, Grand National Championship in 1987 with his kart. Whoa! And it wasn't even state-of-the-art. It was really old, but he... It's yeah, been... He hooked it's it up. It's been dramatically modified over the years. Oh, I bought the yeah. kart new... In, uh, not new. I bought it one year old from Tommy McCann, who was a pretty well-known NASCAR driver, a modified driver. Mm-hmm. And when he got out of karting, I bought the cart. And since then, it's been retired, I think, four times. Yeah. And it just keeps coming back. <laughs> That's every, every, great. Like every the drivers. Time, yeah, every time with a whole bunch of new modifications, and it just keeps working better and better. That's nice. So. That's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, everything old is new again. Same thing with cars. We just, you know, you see the vintage cars coming back, vintage motorcycles. We have a friend, Christian, out at uh, LI Racing, who sent us a picture of his his cart that he's got in storage. Well, it's not in storage. It looks like it was in the shop. Yeah, that thing has a, the dust blown off it, for yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look like, that looks a little more modern. You know, it looked like the exhaust. Off. But Christian does work on a lot of modern stuff as well as old stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure he's running a gamut over there. But, uh yeah, I mean, I guess it's... Uh, now, what's it like to... Res- if someone had uh, an old cart, let's say they, they stumbled upon one and wanted to re- rebuild it and restore it, mm-hmm. what's the, the parts situation like to find this stuff? Is it you can get, available? You can get anything you need. It's yeah. mostly you got to go on the internet to track it all down, but I have yet to come across a single part that I couldn't get without... So, so it was easier relatively than, easy. It was either easier than restoring your truck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Well, the truck was, but when we did that, it was pretty much pre internet. Right, right. But, um, yeah, you can get anything. Excellent. That's good to know. Yes, Jim put up the on Facebook the uh, Long Island Karting website there. If you're on our Facebook uh, page, it's over there. It's LI. Oh, come on, where did it go now? LIKarting.com. Yes, exactly. Yeah, with a K. Karting mm-hmm. with a K is what you want to use. And, uh,. Yeah, that's uh, now. You guys back in the day used to run it all at some some of the uh, known tracks on the island and whatnot, right? Uh, we raced at Freeport. We raced at Islip. We raced at West Hampton. Uh, that was probably about it for Long Island. And now, then he did street racing in Vermont. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I traveled all around. I ran Delaware, Vermont, upstate Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Massachusetts. All over the Northeast. Wow. Uh, that was the last time I saw you or your cart was when we had our 
uh, the Motormouth Radio 10th year anniversary. It was in 2010 at, uh, at Freeport Auto Wrecking at Jimmy's Junkyard. Correct. You brought the cart down, and I, I drew a crowd. I mean, people were around that, because, of course, Jimmy is like the epicenter of race history on Long mm-hmm. Island. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's very big into that stuff. So, um, and yeah, it was impressive. It was definitely well, that impressive. Was, to see. It, it only had one engine on it at the time, and it had just come out of storage. It had been at my parents' house, which I was in the process of cleaning out to get ready to sell. Right. And it was just living in the van. So when I found out that you were having this party, we said, well, we'll bring it down. Yeah. And that was probably the first time it saw daylight since 1987. Oh, wow. (laughs) And then after that, it went back into my garage where I live and back into storage until this April. Now, right, there was a great article written about you that was, uh, I have a copy of it here. Tell us about that, because people may want to do a little background check and, and, and do some reading on this. Tell them where they could find that. Uh, well, the article was in Auto Week magazine. Um, they came to my house and interviewed me. I, sh- I showed them my garage. They got some good pictures of me inside the garage. Right. And uh, basically, they followed me up to the track. They covered the race, although, unfortunately, we didn't actually get to race because it rained, but we qualified. Which track was that, Rusty? This is Oakland Valley Race Park in Cuddyback, New York. Okay. It's up by Port Jervis. All right. Middletown, Port Jervis area. Very nice track. The nicest track I've ever raced on. Beautiful, oh, really? Beautiful track. I've never heard of, I've never been to Cuddleback, so I don't know where that well, is. Well, if you blink, you, you, you're not in it anymore. Yeah. But the track is super nice. It's relatively kind of up in the mountains a little bit but it's all been repaved it's wide it's got the longest straightaway that i know of in in sprint karting how long would that be do you know uh the length of the straightaway i'm not sure but the track is okay. seven tenths of a mile wow which is a big track for go-karts sure normally they're more like a quarter what's the lap time on something like that 41 seconds that's, 42 seconds that's yeah almost a minute that's a good that's a good time around a track, yeah. But with your butt like an inch from the ground, lock, it feels yeah. like about Mach 3. A, a lot can happen in <laughs> that 40-something it. seconds. Yeah. Mm. I tried it. The average oh speed for the duels, I think, worked out to about 54, something like that. But that's average speed. And there's wow. there's several corners where you got to come to a, almost to a stop. Right. So I'm guessing that we're probably pulling 85, 90 at the end of the straightaway. Oh, yeah. that's nice. In the twin-engine carts. Wow. Damn. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cooking. That is cooking. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's no joke. You know you're moving for sure. <laughs> yep. So what was it like getting back into that cart for the first time after the long layover? Was it uh getting back into the mar- into the into the dual cart was probably not as big of a thing as when I got back into the single cart because when I drove that I really hadn't driven a go-kart for 20 some uh, 27 years. Yeah. So that was but it all comes back to you. You know, it's like I did this for so long. The muscle soon, memory kicks in. As soon as the engine starts and you're out on the track. Yeah. You know, I obviously my skill was off a little bit. It takes, you know, you, you lose your the things that used to come automatically. You got to think about, you got to kind of think about, like, where should I be on the track right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. And breaking points and all of that. But after, you know, after a couple of, couple of sessions, I felt like I was sort of back on my game right, a- right. as close to it as i'm ever going to get at 62 let's put it that way well yeah 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 <laughs> no well you have to find the groove of the track you got to find your lines and, yeah. and all of that so that's i mean that's with any track but when i uh, took the duel out for the first time that was i was amazed i had no recollection of it being as fast as it is really <laughs> <laughs> i was supposed to be so breaking my engines in and as i pulled out of the pits one of the engines started to stall so i punched it to keep the engine from stalling and it lit up the tires and went down the first like the first 30 40 feet of the track sideways wow and i was like wow <laughs> I, I i i don't remember this <laughs> yeah that smacks you in the head and says hey wake up sunshine but you know when you're on cold tires yeah. they were brand new cold tires right. and when you got the dual engines you know each engine is over 25 horsepower yeah so you you got the power to do that exactly and, exactly you know once the tires come up to temperature not quite so much but right right well i tell you what else we have the power to do we have a power to take a break this call is going to have to great give us a call back just like laying over for 20 some odd years before you're getting back into a dual engine cart i guess it's a little bit of the hair of the dog right so we will, we'll investigate that because today is Cowbell Day on yes. on Motormouth Radio. Uh, our listener Tom from Aspico graced us with a pair of cowbells. That hang on, 
Um, yes. I, I was a little remiss in setting up, but uh, Joe here have a yeah. Give me okay, get that all this stuff that's moving around. Good. We got This is a lot easier than my finger. It won't hurt so much. Oh. Yeah, we had a mysterious <laughs> package. Well, Joe plays cowbell on our studio stuff, so yeah, we decided that you know we're gonna we're gonna do it right. Thanks to Tom. So. With that, we'll take a break. We'll be back in a, a quick minute on ninety point three WHPC. is brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs with two locations in Uniondale and Carl Place, both within a five-minute drive of Nassau Community College and also available with Uber Eats. Jersey Mike's is a sub shop where every slice, every sandwich, and every store provides sustenance and substance. Produce is sliced daily in-house. Bread is baked daily in-house. And the 100% Angus beef roast beef is cooked in-store. Experience the sub difference at Jersey Mike's in Uniondale and Carl Place. Saturday Night Fever. Polyester Suits. The Brady Bunch. Bell Bottom Jeans. And the music of the 70s. Every note, including the bass, on this track is played by a monkey. American Hit Radio, Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Yeah, now you're messing with something here on Cowbell Day on Motormouth Radio. (laughs) We're playing our bells. Ray Guarino, Joe D, 516-572-7440. We got Debbie and Rusty in the studio with us, and we have a phone caller. That's what that heart attack meter means. So we'll say hi. You're on with the Motor Mouths. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey. hey what's happening? What's up? Tell us. Listen, you, Christian, you sent us a picture of your cart that you have uh, out there. That's my current one, yeah. That's your current cart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us about that, because Rusty, Rusty and I were looking at that and trying to make heads or tails of it. Actually, well, that's a, I believe it's a Franklin chassis. It's a Franklin. It's an oval chassis. Okay. Uh, it's a Doug Ferry Briggs. It was built out in Suffolk. It was a motor that came off a champ cart. That belonged to John Beatty, who was actually running a modified now. Wow. Um, John Beatty, I used to work on his Legends car, and when I was down in Atlantic City, because I go, I go, you know, with the three quarter midgets, they race indoors. Mm-hmm. And John Beatty won the race in Atlantic City with that car, with that motor. Right. And then when I was working on his Legends car, I was at the house dropping the Legends car off, and I saw the motor sitting there. And he sold it to me, so you know I have. It's a, you know, the motor's a championship motor. And um, what size is that motor, Christian? It, it's a five horse Briggs, but it's it's an alcohol motor. Ah, alcohol. Mm-hmm. It's got a Reaper clutch. It's got a dyno cam in it. It's got all sorts of stuff going on. Uh huh. When was the last time you rode that car? I haven't yet. I'm still trying oh. to build it. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> and where is the, the first place you're going to drive it? I don't know. <laughs> out in the parking lot, or was that down? Uh, how about yeah, that? Probably, that, yeah. How about the park um, at the end of your uh, your uh, your in road the there? Yeah, I, it's just something that's been in the works. It, you know what happens? I had to go to Bosnior to buy a seat. He was the only one that had a seat that I fit in. Oh, <laughs> well, you're not an overly big guy. I mean, it's not like it would be hard six to two. You know, it's well, like, six two. Yeah. Well, I started my first go kart was a Rupp. Right, right. And, and I remember that name. When I graduated Dark. elementary school, my dad bought me a Rupp. Had sure. no motor in it. We put a three and a half horse motor. Oh, All right, Ava, stop. Come on. I'm on the I'm on the radio. Christian's Someone daughter like is just trying to yeah. play. Today. That's yeah. good. Yeah, she's getting into my. She's under my feet all day. Today. Excellent. Um, but I remember, you know, my dad was working with Sean Vesley back then, and we, the two of them dove into that thing. And I remember we took a sprocket and we welded a motorcycle disc to it, and I had an <laughs> Air, Airhurst brake. Caliper, nice. with, uh, all sorts yeah. of stuff. The little like, mini brake. 
My my first real go kart was a '69 Rupp Dart frame, three and a half horse with a disc rear brake. Uh huh. Eleven years old. <laughs> nice. And when my dad worked at Precision Collision in Oceanside, he worked with Eric Probath, which your guest might know him because he's big into vintage I, cars. I do know Eric, yes. Okay. Yes. He's a piece so, of work. So <laughs> grow, growing up around Eric, obviously I know I was around a lot of maniacs, and at Precision Collision, was they, they were building homes in the neighborhood back there. It was like a cul-de-sac, but it went all the way through. It was like a racetrack. And I remember, I used to, this was like when I was 13, I used to take my go-kart, and I used to race around that cul-de-sac before the houses were built, just round and round all day long. The only challenge was all the drunks leaving Patty McGee's. <laughs> so you, had to watch, you had to watch out for the, the liquid lunch guys leaving the bar. Uh, yeah. So that was my only obstacle then, but that's true. Um, <clears throat> I was never really big into mini bikes. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. I had, I had a rough mini bike. And I put a Tecumseh motor in it. And I was going down straight path in Wheatley Heights. And I remember I, we used to like put a, like a piece of wire to the governor. Yeah. And I whacked that governor off. And, man, I tell you what, I kicked the rod out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when I kicked the rod out, it went out the front of the motor. Okay. And I got covered with all the hot oil. Well, and, and, you know, the ironic part is today you'd be able to remachine and make a new motor with the tools I, in your shop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I should have had a diaper on that thing, I guess. But that's how I, you know, that's when I just I learned all about, you know, the, the governor and how important it is, <laughs> Christian, <laughs> and and how bad the comes are. <laughs> right. On that note, uh, put out your your contact information, how people can find you on social media, because the stuff you do is is uh, it's pretty I, impressive. It's eye candy. It, yeah. it really is. Thank you. Uh, it's just Christian underscore LA Racing. Oh, another underscore. <laughs> yeah, I, uh. I know. I, you know, I'll have to modify that. Yeah, that's no, then they're, they're uh, no, I them. just found out how to do that. No, it's okay. I just, <laughs> <laughs> so did yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> now we're jumping on the bed. Boy, you're... Hey, oh, nice. I, I let her have a sip of my coffee this morning. Oh, oh that explains it. Yeah, nice. well, you know, that's what dads do. Yep, exactly. absolutely. Pretty soon she'll be out there helping you build motors. Yeah, yeah but I tell you, my go-kart days, I, I was a member of EKRA or whatever. It was Eastern Karting Association, Eastern Karting, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. Trying to race, you know, went through all of that, you know. But yeah, yeah kicking the rod out on the mini bike totally turned me off on mini bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the mini bike craze right now is hot. Oh no, yeah. You know, I'm wearing my limbo shirt, Long Island Mini Bike Owners Association mm. today. <laughs> it's hot right now. Yeah. And uh, we had those guys in the in the studio years ago. I've been trying to get them back in. And again, they're yeah. all guys who are you know. You know, advancing in age, so it's it's harder for them to get together and do stuff. But these guys, they want to bring some bikes and do some stuff out in the parking we, lot here. You, you remember the road rats? Ava, hold on. Okay, the just road jump rat. over there. The, remember the road rats? The the hot. Oh, the, the road hot rats. Hot yes, yes. Uh, Pete was a member. Okay. He used to build the drag bikes. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Those are my poker chips from Harley. Yeah. <laughs> Just playing with my change thing. Um, what was I saying? You were talking about Pete and the Road Rats. Road Rats. Oh, Pete and the Road Rats. Remember, he was he was building the drag bikes, the mini bikes, drag bikes. Okay. The ones that look like Bob Steen is on yeah. head. Do you Bob remember Sp- that? Yes, 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 yes. I don't yes, know yes. what happened. I'm telling you, it's making a comeback. Yeah, yeah. Hey. One free show out in California. It's like one of the biggest motorcycle shows on the planet. Right, right. Has a sideshow for mini bikes now. Oh, that's cool. No kidding. So all these top builders, like Jeff Wright from Church of Choppers, he's building a mini bike for the show. You know, we've been seeing at the Thank swap you. meets for the past few years rough mini bikes that were like just dragged out of a pile, and guys yeah. are asking a grand for them. I know, I know. Like, whoa. And, and I sold, I sold my rough years ago. You know what? I sold my rough dart to the sheriff. Or the deputy at the Brookville Police Department. Oh wow! Okay. And when I went to sell it, he t- he took me up to the he picked up my go kart because I, I had an Elmont. Yeah, there's a key in there. Yeah. Um, and we, he took me up to the uh, precinct up there, and he showed me the tour inside. And I tell you, if you get up to uh, upper Brookville Police Department, unfortunately, it's in the good side. They get some really cool pictures of all their old police cars and all the oh yeah the Chevys yeah. with the four hundred nines in it and everything. So right. they have a lot of history from that. Back. That's cool. That's, that's um, cool. But you know, it was just selling that was like a big chunk out of my childhood. You know, I knew things got bad when I could when it would cost me more to buy a piece of crap mini bike than I could buy like a, a top end or or a shovel head engine. 
Oh, I was like, yeah. you know, it, it was like disgusting. I was like, but you know, hey, everything everything cycles around, so that was good. But you there's know. enough parking lots on Long Island oh, to have true. racing again that's with go karts. Yeah, but you need a, you need something that's fairly flat, doesn't have yeah. you know bumps, and you got to sweep I it. Know. You got to do a lot of the problem. Bayshore Bowling Alley when they when they. When they gutted out Bayshore, I was in the building. Oh, yeah. When they took all the lanes out, it's a perfect concrete floor. They yeah, have yeah. the sickest go-kart track indoors in there. Problem um, why they're not doing it? Problem is insurance. <laughs> I know. That's the liability Waivers. insurance. Yeah. Sign your life away. That's yeah. all I did when I went racing. Where's, where is it? Let me sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I take fine, responsibility. Fine <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what's ironic, too, is I have a... I got my go kart in the garage now, and I've been trying to, you know, get the time to mess around with it. But okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I got a Mac Ten chainsaw, an original one. Oh wow! And I say to myself, "Look at this thing, you know. It's it's like it per- it's just the I could I, I remember those days when they always talking about the twin Mac Tens on the back uh-huh. and the West Bends and all that stuff. Wow. That's- and that's like guys like Eric. That's He's what we're running. That. Yeah, that's what we're running up at uh, up at Oakland Valley. Wow. They're, yeah, they're, they're yeah, at Oakland, yeah, OBRP. Yeah, it's a great track. They've These all, guys, they, I think Eric had a box truck or something. They had like seven go karts, and they all pile in and head up and yep. do their thing. They go all the way out to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know. Yep. So, but Eric is definitely he's been through a lot. I mean, you know, I know he lost his shop a few years back and everything, but you know, he rebuilds. He's down, you know, he's down in Freeport. He's got a go kart hanging up in his front window. <laughs> he's if, a I, guy. if I'm correct, he's got. I don't know if anyone's seen his house. He's got a station wagon that's set up like a monster truck that he sometimes brings up to the track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's bizarre. And he had the Hellman. I don't know if he still has the Hellman. He had the Vega wagon. He had so many things. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the only guy I know that has an LS motor with a, dist- a distributor in it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he does the the Vega. Whoa, it's crazy. That's kind of. Oh, that's almost oxymoronic. It is, but he did. He had the manifold. He went through and he put the distributor in. And he he had a turbo four hundred with a clutch housing on it. I remember sitting there. I was trying to get from him, which I thought was cool. Sweet. You know, I had like a regular four speed bell housing with a turbo four hundred mounted on, and had the clutch sleeve and everything. I was like, oh man, that'd be sweet. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, he's he's a maniac. But he, I mean, when it comes to vintage karting on Long Island, he's one of the guys mm. for sure. You got me beat. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. All right, Christian. Well, that's uh, all good news. All good news. We want to keep updates on your on your cart as it. Uh, yeah, keep us informed, please. Progresses. I yeah. Uh, when I do, I, I know it's gonna be a lot of band aids. Now you got another CNC machine now to play with, so you'll be a little busy. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. And the shovel head you posted. That is a beautiful engine, boy. Which Oof. one? Nice. Yeah. Which the, one? Exactly. Which, all of them. Oh, yesterday. It's the 85-inch one I built. Okay. That goes a few years back. That bike's still out running around. That nice. was a great build. Yeah. And and uh, I give it to uh, Morris Magnetos, too. That was a great Magneto. Right. Got the mag on there, right? Was that is yeah. that a um, um, an early S&S on that, on that bike? That 85-inch was a their stroker kit that I put right in. No, the carburetor I was, I was talking about. Oh, yeah, just a regular E. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. No, that's uh, uh, that's on my table. Is a show bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hello. All, All right, right, Christian. We're going to uh, mosey along, take our next break, and uh, and yep. c- carry on with this, the hilarity. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry, we'll talk to you care. soon. Later. All right. So Bye. long. That uh, was Christian from LI, Long Island Racing, liracing.com. LI, it's Christian underscore LI Racing on Instagram. He right. puts, I'll show you some of his pictures later. He puts up some, does some beautiful work out there. Really some, some nice, nice stuff. Let's take a, a quickie. We'll go back to the phones and say hi. You're on the motor mouths. Yo, what's up? Yo. Who are we, spo- who are we talking to? Listen, you guys, you guys are bringing back memories, man, with, with, uh, with the mini bikes. But whose memories are we evoking? Who are we talking to? So look, um, the brands, okay? Remember, a, do you guys remember a brand named Cat? I'm not going to tell you until you tell me who you are. What's Rob. your name? Rob, where are you from, Rob? Deer Park. All right, excellent. So, Rusty, I guess this is a good question for you. What was the question? <laughs> a, a mini bike named the what? Yeah, repeat that brand, Rob. Gillette. Gillette doesn't ring a bell. No, no, no. I mean, I remember one named Cat. Okay, Cat that sounds nice vaguely familiar. Bike. I think Cat with a K. Forget about that. Forget what about before mini bikes when you used to take a regular bicycle, right, and and split the frame in the back, open it up, and and weld another 
rim to the existing rim and put a fan belt on there to the motor on a pulley. Motorbikes. On a, on a yeah. piece of diamond plate steel that you mounted with U bolts to the frame. Actually, mm-hmm. we were lucky. What what we did is we put it in that in you know in the, in the V of the frame. We had a guy in town, Curtis. Curtis, uh, it was I think it was an auto electric shop, and he would weld stuff for us because we were kids. He would do it and not charge us, and he welded a plate on the bike and then helped us out with a pulley and yeah, help him kill like half the population of the town. But <laughs> those things were the most dangerous thing. In the world and, and they rolled out pretty good the bicycle because you had a 20 inch wheel on there like is not they too went pretty good you didn't have a twist grip right you had a, a wire or something <laughs> or even better you would hook it up to one of those shifters like on the uh, schwinn bikes had oh, the yeah. shifters to use that for a throttle right right you know and like you know if you if you were lucky enough to have a slipper clutch at least you had some kind of a delay mm-hmm. but some guys ran direct yeah so it's like you lift it off the ground start. you start it yeah and you just go Mm-hmm. So we're going way back. Listen, there was, I think, 1969, maybe 1970 on Sunday. The par- the parking lot on Deer Park Avenue used to be, uh, it just opened up. It was a brand new uh, path mark, and the parking lot was all blacktop. Everybody used to go in there and ride on Sunday there because the store was closed on Sunday. Right. And then... Uh, Somebody took a spill and got hurt, and they wound up suing. That's and that was it. Yeah. That. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's how. That's it goes. what happens everywhere. All right, Rob. Well, well thanks for the call, and uh, don't be a stranger. Give us a buzz back whenever you got yeah, something to talk time. about. And, uh, All right, my man. All right, Good show, bro. Thanks, Take Rob. Care. So Happy long. Holidays. Thank you. you. Same to you. All right. Well, that takes us up to our next break. Joe, this is the song that you and Rusty have been waiting for. I know because I, I, I thought I didn't have it, but I did because I, I had it in my stack. So we're going to take another quick break. We'll come back with more Go Kart Talk uh, here on 90.3 WHBC. Get the cowbells ready, boys, because we're, right. we're kicking it off with the big man. This is high five, okay? High fidelity. You know what that means? That means this is the highest quality fidelity. High five. Those are two very important things to have in the stereo system. Join me, Kim Tracy, on High Fidelity for a mix of music with a focus on newer music and lesser known artists every Monday, I mean every Tuesday, I mean every Thursday at 2 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC and streaming with the iHeartRadio and TuneIn apps. Music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown, soul, and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Wow, that's like crazy loud music. What are you listening to? The best music on the radio. Come on, this is the Iron Age. The what age? The Iron Age, the show that brings you various types of heavy metal music from all over the spectrum. Really? I've never heard of it. How do you know so much about it? I'm the host. Wait, if you're the host, how do you drive in this car and on the radio at the same time? Come on, don't ask so many questions. The Iron Age with me, Justin Sullivan, delivers the best variety of heavy metal music that you could ever ask for. Only on the Iron Age will you find music as ridiculously heavy as Mashuga and Oceana along with chill and relaxing tunes like Tool and Deftones. Oh, that sounds cool and all, but I think I'm just going to listen to something else. Ooh, I think that's going to be a problem. I think you're going to have to find another ride then. What? All right, I'm getting mine. You getting yours? Joe's yeah. getting his. There you go, Joe. Yeah. And there goes Rob. Yeah. Right to the end on that one. Excellent. On, <laughs> right. on WHPC 90.3, Motormouth Radio. I thought I saw the light flashing. Yeah, we Let's did. Yeah. Go to the phone. It is flashing. Yep. And say hi. You're on with the Motormouths. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Hey. My, hey. Name, is, <laughs> yeah, my name is Rick Keller. Hey, Rick. I am uh, an old racing rival of Rusty's. Ah. I've been racing with Rusty for 45 years, and I'm also the promoter of of the vintage racing in the Northeast. Nice. Excellent. The series that Rusty races in. Nice and, to uh, meet you. 
we finally got through on the phone here. We got a busy phone. Well, yeah, sometimes uh, when we have a show like this, sometimes things really get, uh, yeah. it, it lights up, you know. They and come out of the yeah. work. We, we talk about certain subjects, this being one of them, and people oh. just respond. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I had talked to Rusty yesterday. Yeah. And, um... Uh-huh. And I, now I can hear hear you on the phone here. Yeah, that's, you're going to get some but feedback. I, you may want to turn that down. Yeah. Turn this down. Turn yeah. it down. Turn it down. <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> turn it down. Okay. Um, kind of so in any case, I, I spoke to Rusty the last couple of days, and um, he said, you know, for me to call in, and I said, I am the, uh, the promoter of the series in the North East here. The Rusty's been raising it, and we started a few years ago with this. It's the phone. Um, this is our third year oh. going into the series, and it's growing rapidly. It's, it's having terrific is that on his end? Yeah. We have a bunch of old timers. We're going out to Georgia to raise it on this year in Bonzville. Uh, Rusty and I have battled over the years. I started racing against him back in like 1974 or 75, and uh, we have a lot. We have a lot of stories between us. <laughs> I I'll bet. Deb, I sent Deb some links about the. Um, the Promoters Cup Series. I I, I texted him to our before uh, about the Promoters Series, the Northeast Vintage Cart Promoters Cup Series, and the Long Island Vintage Carting as well, uh, which covers a lot of the um, of the events going on and the things going on in vintage carting here in the Northeast. Nice. So um, you guys sound great. Um, it's, this has been a, been been good emotional <laughs> stuff for us. We actually got into. Uh, into the magazine and uh, and uh, we're we're proud of him and he's back and he's back at it and we're we're actually manufacturing a, a reproduction dual engine chassis that um, to race in the classes that Rusty's racing with the twin Yamaha motors on it. Oh wow, that's uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah it's cool stuff. Yeah, uh, Rick, you're making that um, as a copy of your Invader. Correct. That's right. Correct. Rusty. And what is that like a seventy four, seventy five, seventy five? Right. Okay. Seventy five Invader Pro. It's called the seventy five Invader Pro. I bought that card in seventy seven after it won the national championships at Tackett Speedway in Ohio. Yeah, it was many, pretty. It was many pre- years ago. It was pretty cool up at Cuddyback in the fall there to have the my machine and that one back on the track together again, which hasn't happened. Yeah, for sure. Hasn't for sure. happened I since the eighties. Who's that? I'm sitting, here. I'm sitting here with Freddie. Hey, Freddie. Hey, Freddie. Hey, what's going on, man? Freddie's the competition. He's he's fast. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we also raced under the lights up there on uh, at uh, OVRP on the Friday night. We had an event under the lights, which we do every year. Everybody loves that coming out. They turn the lights on, and it's a beautiful track for that. Wait, now, where is that exactly? Getting that track. That's Cuddy Backville. That's Cuddy Back. Backville, okay. Mm-hmm. That's but the one. If you if you blink, you miss it, right? <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's it's fifteen minutes from Monticello. Oh, oh that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too. Yeah, bad. it's O V R P, Oakland Valley Race Park. Right, right. Oakland Valley Race Park. Okay, cool. That's cool. Yeah, you should put some of this stuff up on our website too. You're you're welcome to post to our uh, to our page. The Facebook page too. Yeah. Guys. Uh, Freddie's good at that stuff. He does a lot of promotional stuff for us, so he'll start putting some of that stuff up there. By That'd all means. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sh- that, that's how everybody gets in get, touch with us. Maybe if we get you guys to come to the track, I got a bunch of go karts. We got at least twenty of them. So, uh, <laughs> they're all fast, and they're all fast. They're all winners. And uh, uh, Rusty can tell you about that. But if we take you to the track, we'll get you in the seat for sure. Yeah, you guys should yeah, come you up. Sh- you should. You'd enjoy <laughs> yourself. I'd like to watch the festivities. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. You get out there and run a little bit. You'd be surprised how, uh, how intense it is. I would actually be crazy enough to do it. I'll tell you the truth. I, I really would. <laughs> Rusty could give you my number. You call me any time. We actually have a spot over here in Islip where we could go take you for a ride if you wanted any time. Ah, good to know. Good to know. I will keep that in mind. We'll have to get so, yeah. a video of that. You know? Rusty will give you my number. Cool. Very good. All right, Rick. Well, thanks. And listen, you have any information you want to put out? Any um, yeah, you know, sh- links or anything so people can find you? No. Okay. Very good. And we'll, so, Freddie, you'll put that on there. Grab my number from Rusty. You call me anytime. All right. You got it. And if you go on our Facebook page, we have different information. We have stuff going on there about this new chassis we're building. And uh, Freddie's a, a custom metal fabricator. He's and he's pretty good at what he does. What's the Facebook? Yeah. What's the Facebook Let's page? Let's put that up Rick? real quick. Yeah. Long Island Vintage 
carting is one. Okay. And then the other one is the Northeast Promoters Vintage the North- Northeast <laughs> Vintage Carting Promoters Cup Series. You talk even slower than I type. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We'll, we'll find those and we'll bring those up. Maybe we'll link them up on the uh, on the, dif- on the different venues there. Yeah, we got four car- uh, and. Uh, yeah, we have a, we run a four a four race series in the Northeast where we have key points for the year and then have year end awards with jackets and trophies and uh, bags and race gear stuff like that. And um, but seriously, you guys get a hold of me. We'll definitely get you in the seat of these cards. You'll have a if you like this kind of stuff, which I'm guessing you might. Um, we'll, we'll show you a good time with it for sure. Excellent. That's that's something we may just take you up on. Thank yeah. you, Rick. Great. All right, nice talking to you. All right, Rick, thanks. Good luck, Hello, how you doing? Talk to you soon. Take it easy, Rick. So long. Take thanks care. for the call. Bye. 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 All right, that was uh, yeah, Rick. I, you know that, that's that's great. I'm I'm not even sure where he's where he he was from <laughs> particularly, yes. but because there was so from many the different places. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, well, he, he, is hard he's, he's a Long Island guy. He was originally from Northport. Now he's living, I think, in Bayshore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But he, he's got a compound full of go-karts. I mean, when he said he's got 20 or 30 of them, he's not kidding. Wow. <laughs> he's got... It's like a, one of those... It looks like a giant inflatable dome almost, <laughs> except it's not inflatable, obviously. Really? Yeah, it's fabric. It's, it's like one of those garages. Well, one of those inflatable but garages. But it's huge. Right, And it's right. full. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's cool. Now, you know, guys like you work like guys like me in a humble garage in a house that's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, nothing... By by some of these guys means it's nothing special, but a lot of work gets done in garages like that, you know? I don't know, sure. how, I don't know how people work in these immaculate garages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you see, they interview people, and their garages are like spit shine, perfect. I everything, know. all the tools are in place, and it's no, like, do they, do they ever actually take it. those tools off the wall? I wonder. <laughs> let's let's take the phone off the wall and say, "Hi, you're on with the motor mouths." Hi, Cole, you're on with the motor mouths. Yo, hey, what's going on? It's Rob. Hey, Rob. Uh, I just called you guys a minute ago about yeah. the uh, mini bike. Let me ask you a question. You're doing a go kart stuff. What if whatever happened to? Uh, Bonsori go karts oh. that were in Deer Park, and then they moved to Bohemia. And I and I looked them up. I called, and there's no answer. Nothing. Anybody know about that? Oh, I remember that name. Uh, Tom Bonsignor, I think was Bonsignor. That. Bonsignor. Okay. Uh, and then there was there was uh, you just had the guy on the phone, Kellers. I think that's yeah, yeah, Rick Kellers. Doesn't he own a uh, go go kart shop on uh, Fifth Avenue and Bayshore? Kellers Motorsports. Okay, he may be working out of there, possibly. Yeah. I can't hear you, man. I'm, I believe, I'm a, yeah, that's it's in Bayshore. I'm not sure exactly the location. Right? Is he still open or no? Oh yeah, Rick is still open. Uh, Bonsignor, okay. I, I don't know about. I haven't spoken to him in many years. Because uh, Bonsignor used to be in Deer Park, and then I think they went to Bohemia, and uh, I think I don't know what happened. He's, he's like he, vanished he, off the face of the earth. He was really big into the four cycles. He, yeah, he was most. I uh, picked up a champ cart years ago. I still have it in the garage. Mm-hmm. It's got a full cage, full roll cage, with five point harness, so five horsepower. When was the last time you were on that thing, Rob? Uh, me? Myself? Yeah. Now, forget about it. I can't get in that thing anymore. Okay. My son can get in there, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't fitting in that thing. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it uh, goes good, man. Excellent. Good to know. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks again for the for the for the call and uh, and keep in touch. But Keller's yeah. uh, Keller's Motorsport is still open, then, right? In, in yes. Bayshore. Yes. All right. Good. Then, if I need parts or anything, I know where to go. Yep. Excellent. Okay, Rob. Thanks. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank thanks you. for the call. So long. All right. All right. See, this this kind of stuff always evokes great memories and great. I tell you, the stories. This will this will just propagate. This will keep going on, which is which is great. This is uh this is the kind of stuff. The fabric of what guys. You know, and and girls grew up on. Debbie, when was the last time you were in a go kart? Oh my <laughs> God, the powder puff race. I don't remember. <laughs> really? And I and I didn't like it because I was too close to the ground. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the whole thing there, you know. <laughs> and, and she didn't like practicing be- because we put an X on he the back of her helmet. He put a big X on uh. the helmet to stay <laughs> away from me. Well, that's <laughs> what you do when somebody's you brand to. new. You put an X on the helmet. <laughs> right. Everybody knows to give you plenty of room. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put an X on Love the it. phone and and see who's on the line. We'll say hi. You're out the motor mouths. Hello. I was curious if 
You were going to talk schedules for upcoming go kart races. Who are we speaking with? Tim Coville. Hey, Tim. Tim? Okay. Hey, I know Tim. Okay. Uh. What do you know about scheduling, Rusty? <laughs> uh, I do not have a schedule at this exact moment, but. How could he find one? It's um, VKA website, probably. Okay. Uh, which is what? VKA.com? I guess. I forget. I don't have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I guess terrible we'll, have to get, we'll have to get that up on Actually, the no, it's site there. V, v, yeah, VKA Carding with a K dot com. Okay. All right. Thank you. And uh, and that's good. Okay, Tim, you want to uh, talk about cards Tim, at all? Or? How's the MG running? Really well. Good. Really good, well. Good. Thank you. Ooh, what year MG? Another of Rusty's talents. It's is, a uh, 73 BGT? Yes. Oh, yeah. nice. oh. We, uh, I did an engine change on it. We 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 I had he had the engine rebuilt. I pulled it out and put it back in again. Excellent. And I did some other stuff to it. Yep. And, and yeah, it's actually it's been running well. Thanks to Rusty's <laughs> talent. Right, because Rusty's such a good mechanic, uh-huh. he doesn't need Rusty's uh, talent anymore. Right? Yeah, I actually fixed the MG good enough that it didn't break down for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Very good. Yeah, which kind is words on a British car. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right, Tim. We'll check out the websites and uh, and don't be shy. Give us a call back someday. Yeah, we'll see talk. if we can get some of the stuff up in the, on the. Yeah, we'll put some stuff we'll on do. our website. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tim. Bye bye. So long. All righty, we're going to take our last break and uh, then we'll come back and probably have more phone calls. So yeah. it ends up the last CD that I had. I was going to play Moby Dick by Led Zeppelin because Bonham just with the cowbell is like yeah. In there. But I go to take it out of my case and it's not there. That means it's in the CD drive on my computer. <gasps> I didn't take it out. Uh, no. So that's why I was frantically looking on the computer here for right. music and I found something uh, secondary but we'll go to that and we'll come back uh, with, with more fun and, and go-karting talk here on 90.3 WHPC. Take off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 6 on Revelations, right here. Here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Please stay tuned for Motormouth Radio on Sundays at 12 noon, every Sunday, exclusively on WHPC. Join the Motormouths, Ray Gorino and Joe D. Features information, guest interviews, tech tips, and all your call-in questions on all topics relating to automobiles. And these guys know their stuff. In case you haven't heard this show, not only is it very informative, it is hilarious at times. A lot of call-ins and a lot of crazy people calling in with problems with their cars. And, okay, Joe and Ray offering their expert opinion on these things and doing it in a somewhat comical fashion. Uh, right. Radio All show. right, that was a comical fashion because it ends up the song ended before the <laughs> before we came back. So we're back. <laughs> you know, hey, this is live radio. Things happen. The magic of li- like like that magically flashing thing we over there. We just caught it up. We go back. Motormouth Radio. Go to the phone. Say hi. You're on with the Motormouths. Yo. Hey, hi guys. This is Fred the Rotella. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing just great. Where are you from, Fred? I'm from Long Island. I'm originally from Argentina. I'm racing with uh, Rusty, and I'm sitting right next to Rick Keller. Oh, very good. Oh, cool. Uh, We just spoke uh, just before. I have the date for the uh, Promoters Cup Series. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Uh, Yeah, put them out. The first day is going to be Lafayette, New York, May 17 and 18. Okay, that's going to be a new track for us. The second day is going to be Chestertown, uh, Maryland, June 21st and 22nd. Mm-hmm. The third one is going to be Oroville, uh, Pennsylvania, September 6th and 7th. Okay. 
and Cody Back Bill, OBRP, uh, October 4th and 5th. Is that up on the... Where do you find that? Is that on the internet somewhere? Uh, yes, that is on a big game website as well, the uh, Promoters Cup Series Facebook page, and on uh, my page as well, Long Island Vintage Cutting. Okay. Okay. Now, is you that, guys can find pictures. Is that Long Island, the words, or L-I? No. Long Island, the word. Okay, Long Island Vintage Carding dot com, and is that carding with a K? Yes, yes, o- always with a K. And, and that yeah, is it's like the old custom page. cool thing, huh? Okay, always a K. Yeah, okay. excellent. And that is, and that is a Facebook page, though. A Facebook page. Okay, well, yeah, people can Google it and they'll get the links to Facebook or wherever else it is. That's uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I tried to get you know new stuff coming up all the time. You know, um, uh, same thing with Al. He's the uh, the one that runs the. Um, uh, Promoters Cup uh, series fake list page. Okay. That, and by fun. the way, once New York moved to North Carolina a couple of years ago. Uh, okay. That was Tom Tom Bonsignor. That's the yep. what the guy that the, all, all of them on, moved to North Carolina a couple okay, years yeah. ago. Okay. Home of NASCAR. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's cool. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for that info, Fred. That's, thanks for uh, bringing us up to speed. Wow. Cool now stuff. we can find this stuff very easily. <laughs> right. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Yeah, for, we, very we, cool. We've been having a blast with these uh, promoters, Cup. We've been having an average of 75, 80 cards. Wow. That's a good feel. Uh, the biggest class that we have, one of them is the um, 6.1 rear engine. Um, we have a record in the United States for that class. With uh, 21 participants uh-huh. in one event. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a lot. Quite Quite impressive. And, and that class is the real old ones. Those are the carts from the 60s with you oh, know, really? the engines yeah, mounted have, in the uh, back. Yeah, No bucket um, seats. You sit bolt upright with your knees in your face, and and they're fun. <laughs> they slide around. They're, they're a lot of fun to drive. Wow, and they're fast. They they got just as much horsepower basically as a modern cart, but they don't have anything like the stick. You know, to tie it into like the slot car thing, it's like you know I was always a an Aurora AFX guy. It's like racing your later model AFX or um, you know G plus cars, or whatever, against the old Thunder Jets, the T Jets. Right. Those things were sliding all over the track, little skinny hard tires, and the, and the, and your new ones had magnets in the bottom. They stuck to the track. It's like you almost couldn't lose, you know. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I also race slot cars in the winter. Nice. I, I have a track in my basement. Uh, it's Excellent. all it's all landscaped out. It's really nice. It's like a modern rail, a model railroad. Excellent. And we got a group of about five or six diehards that uh, that come by four or five times a year, and we drink a lot of beer and race slot cars yep. on a Sunday. I know Christian does that over at Sells Auto Body. He visits them in the winter too. So maybe we got a, another hobby. I think the UD needs a track. Yeah, I that's think just John, what, just that's just what we need. We could put it on the uh, on the heating ducts. We could I be think, an overhead uh, track. Yeah, I think Dougie could get the the hardware, and Johnny could build it easily. Oh yeah, no, leave it to them. Pretty soon we'll uh, we'll have to have a televised uh, race that would ra- rival anything that's on like uh, the Velocity Channel or the Motor Trend Channel. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, Fred. Well, thanks for the call, and we hope to. Uh, pick up with this again later you know, and talk to you again soon about this later when maybe when the season progresses absolutely all right it was a pleasure guys thank, thank you right. so thank much you. pleasure to hear from you okay Fred. take right. it easy thanks Bye-bye. take care all right that's fantastic very good um yeah excellent that's yeah. uh well, let's see we got our first slot car question do you do you run carrera slot cars you can oh, okay not if, if you want to win you don't <laughs> <laughs> oh okay there we run the 132 nd cars which are the same size as the carrera cars but right the carrera cars are very very heavy they're, ah. they're built for kids to crash repeatedly ah okay so like a, a scale, right up my alley <laughs> yeah a, yeah a scale electric or a slotted car is the way to go they're much more sophisticated gotcha yeah we're gonna go back to the cool. phones and say hi you're on with the motor mouths Caller, you're on with the motor mouths. Uh, yes, sir. I'm part of uh, Rusty Becker's pit crew, Stone Age Racing, when he rises up a cutting back. Yes. Ah. Hey, hey, Mark, what's happening? Hey, Rusty, how you doing? And I'm this good. is Mark. Okay, Mark, good to hear from you. Mark uh, and Colty are my, my pit crew. They, and, uh, they, excellent. and my wife, Debbie, also. She's <laughs> right. actually the crew chief. But they uh, they do the heavy work for me, so I don't so I don't trash my back at the track. Well, yeah, you got to have a crew chief, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so what's happening, Mark? Tell us uh, what's on your mind. 
Well, what's on my mind? I'd like Rusty to uh, talk a little bit about his uh, brand, Stone Age Racing, why it's called Stone Age Racing, and a little bit about his unofficial mascot, Sammy, who has a wonderful bombardier jacket that he wears. Okay. All right. That's a, that's all good topics. I think we could all probably guess where Stone Age Racing came from, but I'd like to hear Rusty explain it. That'd yeah. Be well, there's, there's a couple of different explanations for that, um, but the most... The best one would be that we were, I went with a couple of friends of mine. We were racing out in Pennsylvania, and we pulled into the pits, and when we unloaded our equipment, we always ran older equipment. We never had the money for the state-of-the-art stuff. So some guy came up to me, he's like, he's like, wow, you guys are from the Stone Age. And every, ever since then, it's, we've yeah. been Stone Age racing. And then it stuck. <laughs> there, there's other explanations. You said that, that, that's like a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's a pretty, uh, we're actually kind of known. I, at the, we used to be anyway, and now, again, we are again, so well, yeah. whatever. Yeah. At the Grand Nationals, we had like a cardboard tarp over the, <laughs> and we had a rusted yeah. out van, uh-huh. and everybody came from California with palm trees and astroturf, and you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. astroturf. We, so. we threw a piece of cardboard over the cart when it rained, and it was all soaked with oil from being under the cart. In yeah, the van. that's fine well, waterproofing. The, the oil helped repel well. the yeah, water. The oil yeah. it sheds right. right off. It repelled the water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing is, uh, Sammy is my dog. He's a uh, okay. poodle. Bijan. Poodle Bijan mix. Oh, With nice. a punk rock, you know, hairdo. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. He looks a little like Rod Stewart did back in the day with his hair. Wow. And uh, he's getting old, but he's still a good dog and, you know. Excellent. He comes to the races and he, it, the noise doesn't bother him and he just loves it. Yeah, That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Always good to have a dog that can handle it. Yeah. 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 Oh, good stuff. Well, how's that, Mark? Does that cover all bases, or we lose yeah, that covers it for me? I just wanted to make sure Rusty guy. I I love the story of how he got his name, and I just wanted all the listeners to hear that. Rusty, love you. Talk to me later. Let's have a beer. All right, take it easy. How's the rabbit? Oh, she's much better. Oh, she's good, much better. Good. She's eating and she's doing very well this morning. Excellent. All right, thanks, thanks a lot for the call, you. Mark. We appreciate it. Yeah, take man. care now. All right, take it easy. So Bye. Long. Excellent. Anybody else you want to talk to who you know? We we get the rest of you. Um, yeah, we got like knows? three minutes. Yeah, flooding in. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are getting to the end, and I got to say, this was, I don't know if we really covered it, our Cowbell Day today. Yeah. We had mentioned in past shows how, you know, songs with Cowbell, and, and one of our listeners had replied with, hey, you need more Cowbell, which has kind of become a catchphrase in the in the rock genre. More Cowbell! Yeah, with, uh, you know, SNL and all that, so... Tom sent us a pair of cowbells, you know, so we decided that we would make the cowbell day. But first, we have to go back to the phones. Yeah. And we have to say hi. You're on with the Motor Mouths. Hey, this is Tom from Massapequa. How you guys doing? There he is, hey, Mr. Cowbell. cowbell provider. What's up, Tom? Um, my pleasure, guys. Uh, listen, I don't know Rusty, and Rusty's probably glad he don't know me. But, Rusty, <laughs> thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Um... What do you call it? I wanted to um, ask. There used to be a guy, and he was helpful when I was into carting a little bit with my son, Tom Kyer, out of uh, Brentwood. He had a shop. Does anybody know him? Is the shop still open? That doesn't ring a bell with me. When when was this? About fifteen years ago. It's not that long ago. Yeah, I was kind of I was out of carting at that time, so I don't really I'm not familiar with him. He was very helpful. If he's around, he he had opened the shop and was doing some stuff with costs. And we got involved with him when they were still in the Nassau Coliseum parking lot a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That that era, like basically, I got out of carting before West Hampton was closed and turned into a, a hotel or whatever it is now. An old got it. Condos, uh, or condos or whatever it is. So yeah, I'm not I just really familiar to bring with that his era. Name up in case it helps anybody, if he still has the shop. He was, you know, selling frames and parts and stuff, and he was a really nice guy, uh, just a good guy, and he helped me with my son. I wanted to give him a shout-out if he's around. Tommy Kaya. And also, if I'm not mistaken, you guys may know this, this Bonsoon... Bonsoon, Bonsoon the Bonsoon Whatever guy? it is. Tom, yeah, yeah. Tom we got to wrap, yeah, so yeah, make come it on, quick. Talk quick man. Didn't his son get into, like, pro racing or something? I believe he did, but I don't know the yeah. history. We'll revisit well, that next week, Tom, because we got to run now. We, we just are, fried it's the end of another our clock. hour. <laughs> Be well, guys. Thanks for the call. Thanks. So long. All right, we all got to we got to go. Debbie Rusty, thanks for coming in. Thanks it was, for having us. It was great thanks having you. Having that us. was very cool. How come our music isn't playing? There it is.
That's better. That's better. All right, we got to go. We're out of here. We'll see you next week. Motormouth Radio, we're off. Bye.